I decided uh, I'd been to infantry school, and I decided I didn't. I, I, if I was going to be in the business, I wasn't going to be able to do 20 years in the infantry. It was it was tough. I mean, my knees, ankles already. So I decided to, to try flight school. Well, it was too late because of my grades. I couldn't get the appointment that I needed. So I I I, I branched uh, armor, and my colonel was able to get that changed back to infantry, and. Uh, which was a win. That's I was. I went to infantry officer basic course in uh, in '85, and uh, and coming home, um, I went by the UCA the ROTC department and ran into a recruiter who, we, Arkansas was standing up the 437th Attack Helicopter Battalion, mm -hmm. and they were shorting many pilots, and I went upstairs and. You know, the little old lady in tennis shoes, the secretary downstairs, helped make that happen. You know, she said, hey, weren't, weren't you looking to be aviation? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, there's a recruiter upstairs. Why don't you go talk to him? And I did. And four months later, I was in Fort Rucker, Alabama in flight school. When I was in advanced course, Lauren was born. They called me in formation and said, Cadet McMullen front and center. And I go out and they said, Cadet McMullen is the proud father of a seven pound, 13 ounce baby daughter. And everybody goes, yay! And then he says, get on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't see her. She was probably three weeks old when I met her. Um, so I go to flight school. She's pregnant with the twins. She has the twins while I'm going. Um, I come home just in time for that birth. Um, and then basically we didn't have FaceTime and all that stuff, so we they grew up with videos. You know, Robin and Dad and everybody would video and crawling, and and Dad would crawl on the floor and he'd look up and say, "How's my Colonel?" <laughs> I'm like, "Colonel, I'm, I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to be a farm boy again because I can't learn how to fly this thing." <laughs> you, know, you would do 58s. Everybody did initial entry 50, 55s, TH 55s, and then you'd track Hueys or uh, Jet Range um, OH 58s. Apaches were uh, were come, were online, but they were Arkansas didn't have any Apaches or or Blackhawks. We had Hueys and Cobras, so um, I was I was hoping to be a Cobra pilot someday. But um, that was more for the warrant officers, and um, so I you know I, I mastered the Huey in, in flight school. We were one of the first uh, states to do it. And uh, what we would do is we would we would train crew chiefs and uh, uh, we would call them observers, uh, some soldiers to ride in the back of the of the Huey uh, or up front in a, in a OH-58 and look for uh, cultivation plots of marijuana. We also learned how to look at some homesteads and and and, and uh, not to discuss what how we did it, but we we could uh, sniff out uh, some growers then and. Uh, and, and of course, the, we, the, the traffickers on the highways we were sometimes uh, used uh, to pursue cars and, and, uh, and then we'd be on the mission and we'd be used to pursue people. Um, and we had uh, the FLIR, the forward look in infrared, which we were one of the first to get to use that. And we had the night sun, which would light up the sky from about 100 feet. We could light up a city block. Seven pilots, 72 of them were, were Vietnam pilots. And I would start my class because I was right out of flight school. And they didn't have those books going up through Vietnam and performance planning and charts and all that. So they figured that all out on their own. So my it was a challenge teaching these men. I mean, I've come out with, you know, I only have 100 hours and I'm teaching guys with thousands of hours in combat times. And guys have been shot down, captured. You know, it was, it was quite an experience. So, I cut my teeth with some of the finest that the military has ever built. And the S-4, my first full-time job, second one for, first one 14th Aviation. Active Guard Reserve? Active Guard Reserve. So I'm no longer the, the AGR soldier. And that's what, that's what you know, our leaders need to understand. You, you're, you're asking a man and a woman to, to, to hold down a 40, 50, 60 hour a week job. And then if they're a pilot, they're going to have to fly two nights of those a week, at least three three times, three weeks in the month, um, and then drill at least one weekend. But if you're if you're really salty and you really want to get ahead of it, you got to drill two weekends a month. You got you need to be there when everybody else is in there so you can get ahead of the game. Um, so we ask a lot of, of our citizens. I, I held myself to the same standard we asked our enlisted to do, and I won't call his name. But he would have a stack of recruits that he could pursue, and he wouldn't do it. He would only do just enough to keep 
to keep you know the, the boss off his back and I said I'm doing I'm doing four months I'm doing I'm gonna hit my 50 in president's 50 award mm -hmm. and I did it too it's on my OER so I did it two years in a row that that is pretty impressive and and uh, and so I, I enjoyed it. I looked at my my you know my plan for my future is aviation we have to meet gates uh, our gates and and then performance gates in that specific month number of months while on flight status and I was getting close to missing this gate and uh, a couple of guys I missed, mentioned earlier just didn't care you know that was outside out of mind no longer a threat you know because it's highly competitive in this business as you know so I went to the boss and Colonel, uh, Colonel Walford and uh, he brought me home and uh, got me back in aviation. Well, my right. life had gotten turned upside down. I just bought a farm. I was just getting back into farming. Uh, and and uh, I was looking, I mean, this was 03. I was going to retire in 07. I'd had my 20 years, and that was that was, that was the plan. That's what everybody expected, 20 years now. You get your 20 years active duty now. It had been 25 years of service, and boom, and go. And uh, so I did not see it coming. So when they selected me as a second battalion commander, uh, you know, I was already at the, co at the course, and then we get our deployment orders. We were, we were also running the airfield. So this is where we finally, we really, Arkansas shined. I mean, our, our training that we had done for years, um, I show up and I am the Army piece of the joint, 332nd Joint Operational Support Squadron, which is an Air Force unit, Tuskegee Airmen. They stood that up, the squadron up, uh, just for this facility um, and, uh, at Balad. And uh, the Air Force had Balad, Kirkuk, and Talil. I had uh, Balad, Taji, Tikrit, uh, Mosul, uh, Washington Helipad, Baghdad Radio, uh, Liberty Pad, um, moving the soldiers around the green zone. So, I mean, my, my, pay, my training as a farmer and as 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 one with many bosses, it paid off. Anyway, we set the the, the radio up, the nav aid up in Mosul, made it working, and that was the the main. There was not a lot of heavy threat up there, so heavy aircraft could land. C one thirties could bring in troops and stuff. Uh, Balad, uh, we were taking mortars heavy, and and uh, and rockets. We were, we, we, I believe the number of rockets while in 365 days we were there was, was over 700 rockets. We, we did know that, that we were still treating this as a policing action and we were at full out war. I mean, we landed there, we were surrounded. I mean, we, we were only, you could go any direction you want to and engage with the enemy. And anytime they broke in inside that sanitized area, uh, we would have, we'd take casualties. Bullshit. It changes you. It rewires. It hardwires your brain. And when you have to to go against what you, everything you've been taught your whole life to in order to stay alive or keep your men and women alive, it changes you. It was like winning a football game, and you'd show up and the joy of bringing everybody home is just something I'll never forget. I, I was motivated at a very young age. And, and all this came to fruition. Uh, and then you find yourself sitting in the homes with, with veterans that, or family members that's lost a loved one. And, uh, and, you, and you ask yourself, uh, is, it, is it worth it? Uh, you know, you, you look at some of the political reasons why we, were, why we do either in Vietnam or, or Iraq or Afghanistan. And, and you know, the bottom line is what pisses us off the most, what motivates us the, the best, is taking care of our buddy. And you worry about that soldier under your care or sitting beside you. I'm proud of the fact that my son and I joined uh, or served in Iraq together. He went on for two more tours. He is now here. He was a wheel vehicle mechanic. Now he is an IP in the Lakota, LUH-72. We were always ready. I mean, we, I don't know that we ever said no. Uh, the only time we said no was the weather. Um, um, I don't know of an OR, a readiness issue. We were, we always, it's always been a, 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 
a challenge between operational, what, op what they want operational. They want 10 and you can only fly 7. Uh, and then it's only because you can fly 7, then you got to listen to the uh, bean counters. They said you only got enough to fly and money to pay for 4. You know, so there's been times where we couldn't fly. We had soldiers not getting their minimums because we were out of money. Uh, this end of the year, September, October is maddening. I mean, the recording, and then you got too much, and then you know everybody had to, everybody's M day soldier, so they they went and found other jobs, so now they can't come back and execute the mission because they had to go start another job. But oh. absolutely, as soon as I could train someone beside me or below me to do my job as well as or better than me, then I could move on to something else. And if you could not do it, then I have failed as a leader. And and if I did not do it, then I have failed as a human being because I'm selfish. And, and I think more about me than I, than I do the organization that I work for, and that's wrong. And we're, we're not going to drink coffee together if that's the way. So, uh, and, and, and that's always the way I felt. I was always looking for those people that were capable, where I felt were capable. And I wasn't judging them. I mean, activities and people working for you will tell you pretty quick if you, if you can or you can't. And I, and I sometimes try to put around uh, a, a peg in a square hole and vice versa, but not very often. And I listened to my junior enlisted, and my and I and I pursued my senior enlisted, and 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 I knew that these guys and gals that had done this for many many years before me, damn well ought to know what they're doing, and if they're going to spend their time to help me, I need to listen.